Jim Harbaugh is staying at Michigan. Now, do we do we think that this was solely because he did not get an offer from the Minnesota Vikings or whoever else? Or is there something else to this? He told Ward Manuel this will not be a reoccurring thing. He is happy to be at Michigan as long as they will have him, reportedly. I, does How does this change the relationship with Michigan? Does it change anything on, on your end? No, I don't think so. I think he wanted the Vikings job. And I think he was under the impression that the Vikings job was his. Okay? And when he went in, he realized, this is not mine. They really are doing a vet. But, okay, and you can say this is arrogant on his part. You can say this is wrong on his part. You can judge him for this all you want. But this is like calling in Leonardo DiCaprio and having him uh, uh, audition, right? Like, Yes. Hang on now. If you call me, then the job is mine. If you, you know, want to call a bunch of these coordinators or people that have never been there and done that, um, then, then that's different. But this guy this guy took three teams to uh, the NFC Championship game while at the 49ers and, uh, and went to one Super Bowl. That's, that's pretty strong. Not a lot of people have the resume he has. And, uh, and, and I do think that he's, he's kind of one of those guys, if you're calling him and you're calling a bunch of other coordinators that have never been head coaches before, there's a difference in those two things. And so not – Say what you want, judge however you want it. I don't. I think he didn't like the way that played out, and I think he says, "You know what? I'm done. I'll just stay at Michigan. I'm happy here." I, I, I would. I think he would like to try to go back to the NFL. I honestly believe that. That's why he tried to do it. I don't think he likes the way the modern NFL runs, and and so maybe he realized, "All right, this is not what I remember it being," and there's maybe a reason why I didn't fit in here uh, while I was here. So. And that, that does make sense. It's it's strange. The relationship between him and Michigan, I think, is always going to be pretty good. But to go and interview on signing day, which their class was basically wrapped up back in December anyway. It wasn't That's that right. big of a deal. But to go and interview on signing day, it looked like he believed and the people around him believed that that job was his, like you said. Yeah. No, I think he does. And, I actually do think he believed it was his. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, none of these reports would have really come out. It wouldn't have been that big of a deal. And instead, so now I wonder, coming back, does the fan base look at him any differently than they did before? Uh, they would be fools to. I mean, I think that I think that would be wrong for a fan base. If if you're if there's a better thing out there for you, and you're not happy that your guy's going and getting that, then then I don't I don't know how to have that conversation. You know, I've hired. I'll tell you, I know it's completely different because you're dealing with a fan and not just like the corporate world. But I've hired a lot of people, and I hired a few of those people that were really, really good. And my biggest trick to keep them with me was to teach them everything I knew and get them prepared to take my job. And so I hope that the higher ups would see that and realize, hey, we're going to lose this sharp guy if we don't promote him. But, you know, you got to take care of me to promote them. You, you know, you, you got to promote me up so they can fill that spot. And, and that was always like my, I guess, trick, the way I'm trying to manipulate the system to move up in the corporate world. Um, but at no point in time did I ever try to hold anybody back or think that it's okay to hold somebody back because you don't want to lose somebody good or think that, oh, well, they don't love it here or whatever. No, it is their responsibility to themselves and their families and, and just – the the ethos of the world for people to go and do the best they can possibly do and so yeah. if if the, if you think michigan's the best job in the world that's fine i i think you're wrong and so <laughs> and that's not a slight on michigan no I of course not think, i don't think any college job is better than the professional jobs now that doesn't mean every college job is not better than some professional jobs Looking at you, Jacksonville. Um, <laughs> I, I just think some of these jobs are not that good, but some of them are great. Some yes. of them are great, and any great NFL job is better than every college job out there. It, I, it, I can't, I can't argue the other way. I just don't understand people that don't see that. I think at some point we should probably do like a hierarchy of NFL jobs and college jobs, like which ones are the the tip top. Like, how high would an LSU 
or an Ohio State or whatever? How high would those jobs be if you compare them to NFL jobs? Very few. I think – so I can answer that question real quick. I think the list is real short for NFL jobs that are worse than the best college jobs out there. Okay? Agreed. Like I, I think that list is maybe two or three teams. And I'll tell you what's sad. Oh, and not sad. I need to change my perspective on some of that because Cincinnati would have been one of those jobs. Okay. Yes. And Cincinnati in two years, in two years, one full year with a dynamic quarterback. And I, I still think, I know this is a shot and I know my friends that are Cincinnati guys are going to hate my guts for saying this. I still don't think Zach Taylor's that great of a coach. I think this team making it to the Super Bowl, even if they don't win, has to change our perspective of how good you can go from worst to first. Oh yes, a hundred percent. It changes everything. Like, everything. Could, you, could Houston? How long? What? What would Houston have to do to do this? What would Jacksonville have to do to do this? Uh, well, first off, you would need a Joe Burrow, right? Well, and so <laughs> yes, and those guys don't fall off trees. You're Agreed. Right. They're, they're not a lot of those guys around, but you know. But you also you need playmakers and you need uh, a good defense. Like that's the that's the thing. Uh, a good kicker, a good defense, playmakers, and a dynamic quarterback. Bill Belichick has always said that teams beat themselves more than win games. Okay, true. And if you can just have a game where you don't make mistakes, let's say you make zero great plays, but you also make zero bad plays, you can win. Like he believes you can win like seventy percent of those games. All right. And and I'll give you a great example of that. The 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 cold windy night in Buffalo against the Bills this year where they threw the ball three times. He he just said we're not going to beat ourselves and we're going to let them beat themselves. And that's and you know what? They did. They absolutely yes. did. They didn't dominate that game. They didn't do anything great, but they did nothing the entire game bad. This is true. This is true. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.